welcome to They Think It's All Over and back for a second successive show on David's side after last week's victorious appearance, a stand-up comedian who obviously didn't read the small print in her contract, where it clearly says, winner stays on. Joe Brown. <laughs> As David's other guest, we're proud to have with us a tennis player who's the BBC Sports Personality of the Year, at least until this year's contest takes place next week. So later, Gary will be filling him in on what it's like to be replaced by Michael Owen. <laughs> Greg Rosetsky. <laughs> with Gary and Rory is a comedian who, as one half of McCoyst and Macaulay, is used to sitting next to a great goal-scorer turned quick-witted TV funny man. So tonight's a brand new experience for him. <laughs> Fred McCauley. <laughs> now, before we start the first round, some serious news. You may have noticed in recent weeks Gary's desperate attempts to toady up to his former employers and get his old job back by constantly referring to a particular brand of crisp. Unfortunately for him, rival firm Golden Wonder have complained to the BBC. So henceforth, on the orders of the BBC bosses, any reference to this particular brand of savoury potato snack will be treated like a swear word and bleeped. <laughs> Just to get that clear. Hang on a minute. So you can say Golden Wonder, mm -hmm. but I can't say Because <laughs> if I say Golden Wonder, people think I'm referring to you, Gary. My love. <laughs> or if I say wanker. <laughs> we start the show. <laughs> With our excuses round, David, Joe and Greg, cast your mind back to the World Cup. That's a popular soccer tournament, Greg. <laughs> and the glorious occasion when Germany played Croatia. Now Yanni. Good effort! It's there! Croatia have scored! It's Yanni! Schuker coming in far side. Vlaivic goes for goal! Oh, it's there! Croatia have scored again! Oh, and there's a chance for the third goal. It's gone in! And it's Schuke. So, just for once, it was safe to write off the Germans, but naturally, it wasn't their fault they got stuffed. So, who did the Germans blame for not winning the World Cup? David's team. Anyone but themselves, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's because they're blokes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's who they blamed. Who they blamed? Gary. I'm sorry, is it Panto season? <laughs> So the price is right, you know. <laughs> Take him out, please. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Sorry, mate. You pay your licence fee. Do you? <laughs> um, did they blame it on their faith healer, Eileen Von Drury? <laughs> <laughs> it was Lothar Matthaus yeah. who came up with the excuse, one of the players. It was his particular uh, version of events. Lothar? Matthaus, or Matthaus. Matthaus. Whichever you prefer. Matthaus. Because right, that's the correct pronunciation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> did we get to jump in? Uh, no, oh. you can have it uh, handed across when they get it wrong. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Did they open up a second game against the Russians and come up against a long, hard winter? <laughs> oh, memories of your teams, David. <laughs> Perhaps you better chip in, oh. actually. You don't even get a chance. Here. Sorry, Greg, please. Maybe they're gambling on uh, England losing on penalty kicks. You never know that. Mm. Oh. That's why you don't get a chance, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm trying at least. You're trying very hard. Classic British tennis player. Come on. <laughs> and I think it's something to do with the political situation because um, weren't Germany the first country to support Croatian independence? So I think it's tied in with that somehow. But I don't know how because I'm a girly and I've said something political. Now I'm going to explode. <laughs> and magnificently, you're absolutely correct for three points. Yes, we did. Oh, try. Yeah. We did try to get German captain Lothar Matthäus to give us an answer, but mysteriously he wasn't in the mood to cooperate. So instead, here's a typical German fan to relay the official reason. Matthäus danach war Hans Dietrich Genscher schuldig, weil es seine Ahnung war, die Unabhängigkeit von Kroatien zu erkennen. Und wenn er das nicht gemacht hätte, dann würden sie jetzt nicht existieren. Und dann würden wir das Viertelfinale nicht spielen müssen. Uh, can I take this monocle out now, please? <laughs> Yes, according to Captain Lothar Matthäus, Germany only lost because their foreign minister, Hans Dietrich Genscher, had recognised Croatia as an independent country in 1991. And so, inevitably, as night follows day, seven years later, Croatia tanked Germany. <laughs> There's now a glut of new names in Eastern Europe. In recent months, Scotland have embarrassingly failed to defeat Estonia, Slovenia, Slovakia, and a... <laughs> 
in recent months, Scotland have embarrassingly failed to defeat Estonia, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Heber Herzegovina. <laughs> Yeah. Do we get a chance to chip in? Yes. <laughs> in recent months, Scotland have embarrassingly failed to defeat Estonia, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Eva Herzegova. It wasn't worth it, was it? Wonderbra. 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 This is sort of a joke. <laughs> Gary, Gordon, and Fred, oh. for you it's the don't go to the loo or you'll miss the exciting bit that. action that is solo round the world yachting. Here are just some of the highlights from the last three months of the current race, which is going on even as we speak, featuring our very own Mike Golding. But a few days ago, Mike lost several vital hours and finished the current stage in a much slower time than he'd expected. So what was his excuse, Gary's team? Did he run out of crisps? <laughs> it's so sad. It's like your last few international appearances, Gary. <laughs> They're trying to do the same things, but they just don't work. Do they? He's not the guy that blew all his money on a hooker. Rory? <laughs> I didn't recognise him. No. <laughs> What's the crowd trouble? <laughs> Where about you from in um, in England? <laughs> Chelsea. They have Canadian cockneys. I mean, um, do you no, eat, they don't. Do you eat jellied seals and? <laughs> A plate, a plate of elks. <laughs> well, that's probably why I moved over here. Yeah, to lose your accent. Can't, can't you tell it's improving? It's good. It's good. I say. <laughs> Was it that the Croatians came down early and put their ball in the net first? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Give the clue, oh, Nick. On, give the, Have you caught was... crabs? No, but it's, it's something to do with the, the natural world. Oh, it's something to do with birds? Yes. He blew all his money on a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. <laughs> Had a bird <laughs> interfered with his navigational system? Yeah, but now I've given you the clue that it was to do with birds, I need to know what sort of bird and how. A big bird. Seagull. So, a big the seagull? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a lateral thinker you are. <laughs> You, any ideas uh, over here at all? A booby. Uh, fish? No, that's not a bird, that's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> and not an easy fish, it gives you a clue in its name. It says flying fish! <laughs> it's a fish! <laughs> fish. If it was a bird, it'd say flying well, water yeah, bird! This is a sea of you! Well, we was, managed, it a, was no. it a swimming bird? No. <laughs> <laughs> we managed to contact Mike Golding by satellite phone on his yacht, so here he is to tell the story. I had a few problems on leg one when I came down below to discover that a load of finches had inhabited the boat. Uh, I looked at the chart and there were a load of new islands because the finches had done what finches do all over the South Atlantic <laughs> and I had a bit of a clean up job before I could find my way to Cape Town. Yes, wouldn't you just know it? He couldn't tell where he was going because a flock of finches flew into his cabin and crapped all over the maps. <laughs> the good news is Mike did go on to win the stage, although he'll be mightily pissed off when he finds out there was a full start. <laughs> and if you don't want to know the final result of this year's race, look away for the next four months. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have no points and David's team have three. Next up is Sporting Bluff, where each team is told three supposed facts. They must decide who's telling the truth and who's about as convincing as Greg Rosetsky's Cockney accent. <laughs> David Steen, your subject involves the best of British. Christie comes storming through! It's Linford Christie! <laughs> Game and Hemmer. <laughs> So that's former world number one Linford Christie, current British number one Tim Henman, and public enemy number one Will Carling. So, Gary's team, what can you tell us about these boys? Uh, the latest edition of the New Oxford Dictionary includes the word lunchbox in honour of Linford Christie. The latest edition of the New Oxford Dictionary includes the word henmania in honour of Tim Henman. God, that one you really can believe. 
<laughs> Rosette's mania. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't... The well, they, have, they have it in the Canadian on. dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadians have dictionaries. How charming. <laughs> They've actually Sorry. got uh, in the Scottish uh, dictionary the word Rosette Sapathy. <laughs> <laughs> Have they got the words second phase of the World Cup in the Scottish dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> or not? <laughs> yes? <laughs> A mythical place! <laughs> Rory. The latest edition of the New Oxford Dictionary includes the word love rat in honour of Will Carling. So, the recently published edition of the New Oxford Dictionary has in it one of the following sports-related terms. Lunchbox, henmania or love rat. David's team. Well, I think if it was my lunchbox, he won't be able to run. But, um, <laughs> Gary, was your nickname Matchbox? <laughs> Yeah, it's all rough on one side. <laughs> I don't know what I had. He's got 56 of them and they've all got a blue head. <laughs> what about Love Rat? What do oh, you think yes, of that one? Oh, yes, please, Greg. <laughs> can I be your ball girl? You can be my ball girl any time, Joe. I mean, I can't run, but I am the shape of a ball, so... <laughs> let's go for the packet. The packet. All right. Yeah, let's go so, for the well, You think Fred was telling the truth, so let's see if you're right. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Fred spoke the truth. Lunchbox is indeed included in the latest edition of the new Oxford Dictionary. It was invented by The Sun with reference to Linford Christie and is defined as a well-known euphemism for male genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Linford's had several children by three different mothers. In fact, he holds the father's race record at no fewer than 27 in a London school. <laughs> Linford's favourite fitness training routine is to train with a 50-pound tyre tied round his waist. He got the idea from Rory McGrath. <laughs> Gary's team, another great sporting hero for you, Alloa Athletics' Willie Irvin. Now, we wanted to show you some footage of Alloa in action, but the Scottish Football Association was so afraid we'd take the piss, they decided to charge double the going rate. Which is a shame, really, because that's meant we're forced to show you this free footage instead. Space for the shot. Well, well, it can't get any worse, surely. <laughs> Muller has the easiest tap in of the World Cup. It's a fine ball by Dunga. Good block. Oh! <laughs> it's cool. It's so, so cool. You see, we didn't take the piss out of the Scottish football, we just let it speak for itself. <laughs> Those were some of our better games. They were, actually. <laughs> High spots. Now, Alois Willie Irvin had to miss the big game against mighty East Stirling last season for a strange reason. David's team, what was that reason? Willie Irvin missed the home game against East Stirling because he was being held hostage by a gang of East Stirling fans. Willie Irvin missed the home game against East Stirling because he's being held hostage by rebels during a scouting trip. Okay. Willie Irvin missed the home game against East Stirling because he was being held hostage inside the prison by a gang of murderers. So, was Willie Irvin being held hostage by a group of murderers, rebels, or most frightening of all, a bunch of East Stirling supporters? <laughs> Gary's team. There can't uh, be enough East Stirling fans to make a gang. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they, they wouldn't have been able to send a ransom note either, because none of them could spell ransom. <laughs> uh, was that uh, scouting murders. as in looking for football talent, or as in Baden-Powell? I only read the card, Fred. Right, but you do have a khaki shop on. I can't give any more information away. <laughs> no, that's khaki. khaki. No, that's khaki. Yeah, <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> no ideas? Prison. No, yeah. Prison one. Prison, oh yeah. Uh, is he a... I don't know whether it's true, but at least you could have got go the Arsenal there. players autographs. <laughs> <laughs> you going to go for the prison one? Uh, where do they play, the uh, Alloa? Is that, they're one of the first things? No, there's, there's uh, Fir Hill, which is Patrick Thistle. Fair part, <laughs> which is Motherwell, and What's the other? East yeah, Stirling's ground is for think where's the seats? <laughs> I'm going to guess, he, uh, he's a, he's a, he works in a prison and he was held by murderers. So you think that Joe was telling the truth, let's see if you're right. Yes! Hey. 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 
So Joe was right. While Allo Athletic were being humiliated by East Stirling, Willie was receiving similar treatment at the hands of a group of murdering inmates as part of his job as prison warder at Glen Oakle Prison. When Willie Irvin was in the prison, they took the precaution of removing his bootlaces in case he did something stupid, like attempting to play for Allower again. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have six. In this round, we delve into the seedy world of sporting autobiography and discover why some of our national heroes become great sportsmen and not writers. Gary's team, whose moving story is this? When I opened the boot of my car, the idea struck me, the shotgun. I took it from its sleeve, and as the players looked out from the coach, I saw their expressions change, and everything went deadly silent. <laughs> As I went inside, Howard looked up and I put the barrels of the 12-bore right up to his nose with my finger on the trigger and said, Now, are you going to bloody play me at Luton? So whose delicate prose was that, Gary's team? One of David's gamekeepers. <laughs> You've not really narrowed it down, have you? That's the <laughs> Someone dangerous with a gun. Sue Barker? <laughs> Is she? Just when she sees you, I'll tell you after what you yeah. said. <laughs> yeah. Shotgun. Howard yeah. must be Howard Wilkinson. Yeah. Of Leeds. Yeah. Shotgun must be Vincent Jones, mm. Esquire. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, I'll give Is you three points for that. Absolutely right. Okay. That was... Hey, that was from Vinnie Jones' autobiography, wittily entitled, Vinnie, the Autobiography. <laughs> Vinnie Jones holds the record for the fastest ever booking when he clattered into Peter Reid after just five seconds. The decision was a bit unfair, though. It was actually a late challenge left over from the previous match. <laughs> Vinny claims that, contrary to his hard man image, he likes nothing better than to relax in the great outdoors, engaging in his favourite country pursuits, shooting, fishing and gassing badgers. <laughs> David's team, whose words of wisdom are these? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw this great big pepper army sausage coming out of the bushes and across the pitch with a ball under his arm. He interrupted me in mid-sentence and said something like, Any chance of a game? When our security man caught up with Mr. Pepperami, he yelled, Get your bloody head off. I'm not standing here talking to a sausage. So, David's team, who wrote that? Uh, it sounds perfect to me. It sounds like a shag and a snack rolled into one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sort of poor man's cotechino, isn't it? <laughs> What's a cotechino? <laughs> Very big peasant sausage. It um, costs about sort of thirty pounds a go in London. Okay. <laughs> thirty pounds a go. Well, you can't actually swallow it. You know how to go on. The parami. It sounds like a. Tower. That's your English accent again, eh? That's my English accent again coming out. But uh, no, doesn't doesn't he play for Chelsea? The parami. <laughs> what do you think, David? I don't. <laughs> he has other people do his thinking for him. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this big pepperami sausage coming out the bushes, or even bushes. Was this Ron Davis's first unsuccessful attempt to explain his story to the police? <laughs> what, just five short months before the incident happened? <laughs> Did you put a time on this? When was this? <laughs> well, Sorry, do we know when this was? Did you? Hold on. <laughs> you didn't put a time All on right, it. All right, then. <laughs> Let me check. You're clever, don't you? <laughs> We've got a word in this right, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> if you'd shown this in Gresham when you batted. <laughs> yeah. I wish he had the timing from when he batted when he was doing this. <laughs> I know it is. Oh. It's not a gag, it's Glenn Hoddle. He's right. That's three Glenn points. Yes, indeed, that was in fact. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that all along. That was, in fact, a controversial training ground incident from Glenn Hoddle's World Cup diary. And there it is. <laughs> so, an England training session was invaded by a bloke in a giant sausage costume. The things Chris Sutton will do to be part of the England session. <laughs> Steve McManaman recently claimed he'd been misquoted by a newspaper which reported him saying, playing for Glenn Hoddle's England is like playing for a cult. I can't imagine what his real words were. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine.
It's time now for Feel the Sportsman. We deprive our regulars of their eyesight, stick a sportsman in front of them and ask them to tell us who it is. Gary and Rory, to you first. If you'd like to take your positions. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Never you mind. <laughs> oh, no. Are you ready, mystery guest? <laughs> yeah. Good. Right, your 90 seconds start now. Oh, that's all. Oh, Limpard's been on a diet. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, no, there we go. Oh. Okay. Something cold and slimy. Oh, dear. Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> I can smell. Ooh, hang on. Oh, rubber trousers. <laughs> Oh, I'm trans and the smell of fish. <laughs> must, go the cash <laughs> must go to the cash point later. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> <laughs> it, these great rubber trousers must that go, go so far point. up. Fisherman. Bingy. What's that? Of sorts. Bob Nudd? No. Nope. Uh, he has name sure. from Fisherman. He has a wealth of sporting. Uh, uh, it's uh, another sport. Too. Fish, yeah. famous fisherman. David Gary. Seaman. Uh, Jack Charlton. Jack Charlton! Jack Charlton! Jack Charlton! Oh! A tissue, please. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> then, Jeff, you'd like to take your positions? Uh, I'm aiming easy. Light bulb's on. David? It's coming. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Seconds start now. <laughs> Is it Bobby Charlton? <laughs> I thought they might travel around together. <laughs> Just quite say hello. You know, see, how do you do? And that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, you're so polite, Dave. <laughs> Leave it! Leave it! Leave it! We've all had a drink. Come on. Is it my leg? <laughs> Ridiculous, that. <laughs> That's what we do know. Does it speak? Does it no. play football? Mm. Has it been near Glen Hoddle? Maybe. Oh, uh, it's, it's it. Uh, is it Mr. Uh, Cotacchino, whatever his name is. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> is it Mr. Pepperami? Uh, yeah! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good at that. One trip pony. <laughs> 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 So at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have 12. <laughs> we finish off with our Croat blaming Pepper Army feeling name game and this week there's a difference. We're going to do an absolutely normal name game with no twists or gimmicks. David's team goes first, so could you pass those to Joe please, Greg? Thank you. And your time starts now. Uh, Canadian sprinter, drugs. Ben, ben Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, um, English goalie, looks like a 70s porn star. <laughs> Name like a 70s porn star. <laughs> uh, England cricketer, fast bowler, um, Stuarts and kings and queens of England. Henry. Oh, uh, uh, Alex Tudor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Alex he's just left hmm? uh, Manchester United and become the new Blackburn manager. Kid. Brian Kidd. Brian Kidd, yes. Um, this is a cricket umpire. Where you cook is his surname. Merth Kitchen. Yeah. 
Oh, blimey. British tennis champion. First name Fred as Perry. in... No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as in um, DeVito, his first name. Danny... Um, Sapsford. Yeah, oh, well done. <laughs> uh, this is have a you met him? I have. Oh, what have you? Oh, I have a chat, yes, I don't <laughs> This is a Czech tennis player, and it's what you do to a bloke's knob. <laughs> <laughs> you don't blow it, you... Sir? Yeah. Cyril Souk? Yes. Thank you. Oh, Souk, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, this is a, a cricketer surname, as in a big thing that you eat, and it's bloody lovely, and it's got chocolate on it and candles in it for a birthday. Okay. Yeah, that's... and uh, Grant, the uh, astrologer, Big fat Russell Cake. Yeah, yeah it, Russell yeah. Cake. Yeah. What a stupid name. <laughs> well done. You moved on to 20, which means Gary's team needs 12 to, draw, to win. 12 to win, 11 to draw level. Yuri, your time starts now. Uh, surname is something we can't mention. <laughs> uh, first name, uh, Scottish name. Hill. Uh, Tottenham, one of the Tottenham goalkeepers. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what? Yeah, but that's but his first name is a very common English name. It's American for toilet. You'll know this, Greg. John. 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 Yeah. John. He's <laughs> Carzy. Carzy. <laughs> Second name, an unmentionable snack based on a potato. <laughs> first name, something you do to a man's knob. What you do? <laughs> Jack, is this yeah, the yeah, original yeah. jar of beetroot? <laughs> Jack, Jack <laughs> this is, um, <laughs> First name uh, is uh, something minty that you suck. Murray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, first name is the past to preterite of the verb to dig. Doug Moore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> past what? Yeah, preterite. Uh, I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> first name is the plural of raincoat. Max. Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Max. 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 Yeah, very good. Um, you'll never beat <laughs> Des. <a> <laughs> I was going to say a man's knob. Anyway, um, <laughs> Des. Walk. Yes. Um, first name: uh, Jamie Redknapp's girlfriend, wife. Louise. Louise. And the middle name is um, MP, disgraced MP, Jonathan. Aitken. <laughs> Louise <laughs> Aitken. <laughs> <laughs> American Ari Aboriginal Arahapo word for a crisp. <laughs> 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 I've run in effort. <laughs> so Gary's team have 17, but this week's winners are David's team of 20. <laughs> Thanks to David, Joe and Greg, Gary, Rory and Fred. We're all off to stop Joe eating Mr Pepperoni. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now.